So kind of what he's saying here is that, you know, Mount Meru is that mountain in the middle that the Dalai Lama, in the middle of the universe that the, the Dalai Lama would say, I haven't found any Mount Meru. I think we can let go of Mount Meru. But it, it was at that time, that was the world view. At that time, it was the view that the world is flat. And also here in the West, we have that view. If you would say the world is round, then you would get burned as a heretic. Yeah. Now everybody says, yeah, of course the world is round. As then everybody said, of course the world is flat. Mm. Who knows, maybe the world is triangle or, mm. or, or square. Or, you know, it, it is until somebody else comes and proves it's not round. And it's round, it's merely labeled. Mm. At the moment, the world is relatively, conventionally labeled round. It's an agreement. Then the agreement will change, maybe, at one point. <laughs> Who knows? Okay, so Mount Meru is that thing that is the mightiest. So even that can be destroyed by these. Not even that is able to withstand the, the power of the pleasures. Okay, 32. All other enemies are incapable of remaining for such a length of time as can my disturbing conception, the long time enemy with, with neither beginning nor end. So what it means here, if we are not conscientious that these pleasures will be with us for a very, very, very long time. All the enemies, either we die, they die, we move away, or we become friends, or something like that. If you are as kind to your enemies as you are to your friends, you have a good chance that they will turn into friends. If you are as nasty to your friends that you are to, as to the people you don't like, you have a good chance that they will stop liking you. Yeah, if you put as, as much energy into being kind and considerate and concerned and caring to the people that you dislike, which the ego doesn't want, you have a good chance that even if they are not friendly with you, but your, um, your, your aversion towards them will die because you go into the space of love and compassion and caring. Yeah? So you don't have to say, you, you don't even have to, to change your behavior, but the thoughts towards them. May they be happy, may they be free from suffering, may they be well, may they be peaceful, something like that. We don't even try. And then we kind of walk around with these glaciers and we take them with us in our next lives. This is it. Yeah? You can't move away from them. You can't go on a holiday and say, look, you stay home, I go on a holiday. Mm -hmm. We schlep them with us all the time. Giddy, are you in doubt or something? No, no there's a okay. wrong sign. It, it looked like <laughs> you are in doubt or something. So they have neither beginning nor end, okay? If we do not do, if we do not do something against them. Yeah, because we keep these habits. And the more we do not go against them, the more they will get strong. <laughs> she says, at the end we have, we, we have a feeling as if we are caught in a trap without exit with a monster. Mm -hmm. And this is why also, you know, very often when people are very emotional and especially negative emotions, they hate themselves. Mm -hmm. They really hate themselves. So, and again, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't really help. Okay, so they, we, they enslave us, we welcome them, they will stay with us a long time. So we have three mistakes, three faults of pleasures. The first one is uh, verse 33. Sorry, can you just repeat that, please? Huh? Can you just repeat the three, please? Just say it again. The yeah. Three. So the first one, they enslave us. The second one is we welcome them. And the third one is that they will stay with us for a long time, not just in this life, but also in other, in other lives. Okay, now verse 33 is like they will never get enough. Like, you know, you give them a small finger, they will take the whole hand. Like, 
Even you give to your desire and to your attachment. You give, you give, you give. It's a bottomless pit. It never says, oh, okay, now enough. Maybe it says enough of this, but now I want that. <laughs> you know, when it says enough, it, sure enough, you want something different. Yeah? And whenever we follow our desire and we try to fulfill it, what we do, we get thirstier, actually, because when you, you, you see you're in love with somebody and you're looking forward to spend the weekend with that person, uh, but then the person has to go again. You at the at, in the evening of Saturday here, uh, you left unhappier than you were when the person was not present and there was no chance of the person coming. Yeah, you see what I mean. You suffer more after the person has been here than when he was not here. So this is why we do not fulfill our desire. They become deeper and deeper and deeper. You have the sweetness of having been together for a weekend. This is why they use this really horrible example, like trying to fulfill our desires is like licking honey from a razor blade. You have the sweetness of the honey on your tongue, but you enforce or you strengthen your habitual tendencies of poverty mentality. I don't have enough, I need more. This is what desire is. And I don't have enough with what is here, I need more. So you kind of, you, you nourish that feeling of, for me, I never have enough. When we look for fulfillment outside. Because we look for lasting happiness in things that by nature are impermanent. I mean, this is how stupid we are. And we still hope that this man will fulfill my needs. I will be happy ever after. This ice cream will do it. You know? This job will do it. This amount of money will do it. This house will do it. This car will do it, and so on and so on. This spiritual practice will do it. So we still have that, um, that wish. So 33 is, if I agreeably honor and entrust myself to others, they will bring me benefit and happiness. If I entrust myself to these disturbing conceptions, in future they will bring only misery and harm. So we can look at this, for example, when you see old people and they're quite bitter. They think about the past a lot and they say, I can't do this anymore and I can't do that anymore and I can't do this anymore because they think that this was bringing them real happiness. My father was bitter. Huh? He was very bitter. He was dying, my father. And he was very bitter. Um, Can you speak a bit louder so everybody hears you? I'm saying that my father, he was dying for six months. But during that, he was, and even before, he was very bitter that he can't climb the, the roof as he my used dad to. Also. Yeah. Exactly. It was like that. He can't go skiing him. anymore. For him, was hell. Yeah. Don't yeah. convince him about other things. So, what does that show us? That he was focused in the material. That these world. things are not fulfilling. Right? And if, if that's your only source of happiness that you have, which means things you do with your body or sense pleasures, you will be left very, very poor when you're old. Whereas this, it says, if you agreeably honor and trust myself to others, if I start connecting with others in a good way, if I start to do kind acts with them, if you do mitzvahs with them, then just the memory of that will make you feel good. The memory of sense pleasures, if you can't do it anymore, brings up longing and sadness. The memory of mitzvahs brings up peace, quiet, space in the heart, fulfillment. So this is why, trust, entrust yourself for the happiness, for future happiness, entrust yourself in others, that they will be the cause for your future happiness if you are considered about them, if you care about them, if you connect with them. Not so that they, they don't need to do anything for you, you only have to think, wow, you know, that time I was able to do this with this other person. Wasn't well, it wonderful? Yeah. Whereas if you, your whole happy moments, which many young people now do, is in sense pleasures, or in, you know, kind of wanting the other person to make you happy with attached love, then at the, at the end of your life, you, then you will regret that you, that you can't do this anymore. And it brings up longing for more, for more of that, and you know exactly that you can't do it anymore. This is the danger about following desires. So Venerable Antonio, he has a very, very good example for that. It's like, 
There's nothing wrong with pleasure. Okay, so don't become that very stern kind of Buddhist who doesn't who doesn't do anything that is pleasant because it's suffering. <laughs> pleasure is not suffering, but pleasure is not happiness. Pleasure is pleasure. It's impermanent. It usually leaves a feeling for more, and uh, you become dependent on it. So that's the problem with pleasure, unless you use it for the bodhicitta motivation, for example. If you eat the uh, ice cream and you go, wow, somebody, so many beings were involved in making that ice cream. Now the connection, me eating the ice cream, may at one point repay that kindness and I will lead them to full enlightenment. Or just very simple, may everybody enjoy something like that. Not just like the sense pleasure, but by you know the happy, the happy feeling, the happy samsaric feeling. You wish for everybody to enjoy pure happiness that's not dependent on glida, for example. So again, you can transform everything to something, and you know that, or you look for where's the pleasure in the ice cream? That's the best. You you look where does the ice cream exist, or where does the pleasure exist? In the sugar, in the fat, in the color. What else is in ice cream? In the taste. Well, what the is the taste? In the combination between my own. What is the taste? Is the taste the sugar or is it the fat? And so when, if you start to take ice cream apart, very quickly you go, boo. <laughs> this is what I'm trying to get at. If you know what's inside, you know, you wouldn't actually find it so wonderful. <laughs> so the happiness is on the tongue? No, in the mind. Okay. What if you have a toothache? What if you, what if you, somebody forces you to eat the whole kilo? <laughs> Where is the pleasure then? So with pleasure again, you know, you can really study pleasure when you are conscientious. First spoon, ah, oh, wow, the first lick, yeah. Second, ah, oh, so good. <laughs> Third, we're already not there anymore, especially when you're with somebody else. Mm -hmm. Or you start to think, oh, maybe next time I take that other one. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes already the first lick we understand, oh, that's not exactly what I wanted. Maybe he should have taken the other one. All right, tell the, tell the, 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 the gelateria now, you know, it's not just rapid stuff, it's yeah. like these scoops, yeah? yeah? So try to tell them I only want one scoop and because I only want one taste. You don't understand. Of course yeah. they need to sell you more tastes so that the pleasure remains because you jump from one to the other. <laughs> if you have three scoops, the same thing, it gets really boring. And then you would start to understand that this is suffering. Yeah? That it wasn't happiness at the beginning because it goes worse and worse and worse. Like your level of happiness goes lower, 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 the more you eat from it. If it is happiness from the beginning, the level of Pleasure and happiness should go up, 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 up. The more you eat from it, but it's like no. it's totally the it's totally the other way around. Maybe it's the habit. What? No, the it's the habit. habit. It's Which the, habit? It's, it's like a community between them. Uh, it's the pre you play with it with the pleasure. Yeah, and because the every time is new when you go to a new ta to the other taste. So it's like starting afresh. <coughs> Try it out. Yeah. You're habitually comforted by the ice cream. Or some that's a baby more. is comforted by his saucer. Uh, an Irishman is comforted by his beer. Okay. The beer itself is not such a big comfort. But well, the beer has the, some chemicals in it. That yeah, but I'm that. saying that the habit of being yeah. in the pub and everything else, yeah. I'm saying the habit is the pleasure. Not necessarily. If, the, if only habit is pleasure, you wouldn't... Actually, I would say the opposite. The pleasure is when you don't know, when you don't have anything to compare it with. This is what science is. Like, this is why we always... We, then our whole life, we are running after that first moment. But we can't have it because we have something to compare it with. So the, 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 the most intense moment of pleasure comes when it's the first time you taste something because you have nothing to compare it with. It's very interesting. Yeah. So because that is the most intense, then we're running after it by trying to repeat it, and it's not working. But if you look how pleasure works, 
it, it really works like this. It's, it's only or comforting at the beginning. Afterwards, it gets boring. Yeah. Like with the beer, you drink too much, you get drunk, then you vomit. Yeah, but if you're constantly comforted by that thing, I'm comforted by ice cream. I take it, I sit by the beer. But you know, by how much ice cream is it? Yeah, I'm not saying a lot. Yeah, this is what I am saying. You don't understand the point that I'm trying to make. It's comforting if you have the wisdom to stop the moment before it turns into suffering. So this is why it can't be real pleasure, or real happiness at the beginning, because if you continue, yeah, and this is what Buddhism calls the suffering of change. That we, something that makes us happy, but we have to stop something external, like pleasure, not internal, like, you know, being kind to others or this, but something external. We have to stop for it not to turn into pain or boredom or suffering. It, it, it can become tortured, ice cream, if you only fed ice cream all the time. But again, it's, as you say also, there's a lot in the mind. Yeah, because the Tibetans, as I say, they're so attached to Zampa that they can eat Zampa every day. They actually say, they look at this and say, what's wrong with you guys? Why do you need to eat something different every day? You see, they have like Zampa in the morning, then midday they have, if they're lucky, rice and dal and a little bit of vegetables. And in the evening they have soup, noodle soup, that's it. Ah, wow, well, and if they have momo, then the big party. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes Joe Main, okay, like fried noodles. But that's it, they, they have a very, very, very small variety of things. Now that they're coming to the West, now also you have these Tibetan cooking classes and they start to add things and this and that. They get habituated to our things. So, the more content your mind is, actually, the more you can eat the same thing, and you still find it good. The more needy your mind is, the more you need variety. And this here in the West, I don't know if it's consciously, but the people who make money with that fact, they yes. really know. Yes. The more choice they give us, the more discontent we become and the more we will need more. Yeah. That's, that's really being played with. Uh, in one year there was this, I don't know if it was here also, there was this ad of Fanta in Switzerland. You have, there was a woman who was sticking out the tongue and putting salt on it, and it said, enjoy your thirst. So you see this disgusting? Yeah, I mean, there needs to be a need. You need to have desire in order to have this kind of worldly pleasure because then there is a need, and then it seems as if that hole is, is kind of, something comes to fill that hole. If there's no need, then there's no pleasure. But the pleasure is absence of need for a very short time. The comforting, as you say, that's what it is. And it can be anything, you know? It can be music, it can be a touch, you know, like the babies when they have their, their favorite blanket and they, when I, these, these kids in Rome, the baby, she had this blanket and then it broke after a while. So then, like, it was so used because she was constantly sucking on it. Yeah? And then only the, the thing that was at the edge, we took it off and she took it with her. I don't know, I, I, think, I don't know how many years she had it. She couldn't sleep without holding it. So we're still like that baby, we still kind of carry these things around with us. So we need to see how it works, we need to see the function of desire, that it doesn't give us lasting happiness. Yeah. So that's what we need to do. So try it out, next time you have an ice cream, three scoops the same kind. <laughs> see what happens, how, how, how it does get boring. And then you might even chuck it away, you're not finishing to eat it. Whereas with three different ones, and you, you're not going first one, then the other. You jump from one t to the other, so you always have the first moment again. Ari. Yes, uh, I have more to say about the uh, pleasure and all. How many only done this? Bliss. Bliss. About pleasure and uh, I don't know if you say it in English, <laughs> but... Uh, pleasure. 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 It's, anyway. uh, it's a short time yeah. and the uh, happiness, you need to walk out for, for this. For yeah, but, need, but increasing you, the time... To get happiness, you need to walk. Uh, like a Of course.
price. But you, but you won't find it. it. But you won't find it in pleasure. This is what I'm saying. The yeah, pleasure, the if you want to intensify it by eating more of it or having no. more of it, it turns into displeasure. It actually no, turns into class, suffering. I, I mean, pleasure from anything in the life is the, is the short time. Yes. But happiness, Many people get to happiness, you need to walk out by level. Yeah, and you need to have the right causes. This is what Lama Zopa says. If you, we put the level happiness on the wrong things, we put the level happiness on these short-term pleasures, and then we just string them very close together, and we think we have a happy life. Yeah? But happiness is being patient, for example. <laughs> happiness is doing, you know, bring, happiness brings ethical conduct is a cause for happiness. Joy is a cause for happiness, so joy has causes. For example, generosity is a cause for joy. Kindness is a cause for joy. Bodhicitta is a cause for joy. Having a meaningful life is a cause for joy. Um, being grateful is a cause for joy. So people think, I have to be joyful, then, I'll be, uh, then I will be grateful. It's the other way around. Yeah? It's all like it's, that. So you say that happiness is a way? It's like to open the way? To get happiness. To get happiness, to get happiness is no. to be kind. Happiness is the way? Yeah, it's just, that's just the postcard that says. It's true. Well, it depends. If it's a way on, uh, and it's, it's a way towards the beer, maybe not so much. I don't know. It depends what way. Yeah, I mean, to walk on the way of happiness, you need to, to do the right thing. I, yeah, exactly. I just told, I just told you the causes. Generosity, kindness, purifying the negative imprints, concern for others. Yeah. It's very simple. But pleasure, we can I mean, it's very simple. Yeah. If you are happy, I am happy too. You first, then me. Then the heart is free. It's very simple. Yeah. It's Mipa Rinpoche in his rap song. <laughs> it's very nice. It's very nice. It's a very nice song. It's about. It's called "What About Me." You can find it on YouTube. This I use with the teenagers. It's first. It's like "What About Me?" "What About Me?" He's looking. He's looking. He's searching in pleasures, in spiritual practice, in traveling, in shopping, and da 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 da. And then somebody does some, a kind act to him, and then it turns into "What About You?" And then all of a sudden, now I find what I was looking for. I find the love, I find the peace, I find the space. And then at the end, because he's got a very beautiful face, so at the end he's, you know, he's like with his things when, when you record, a, record, when you do a recording, and he says, I think he says like this, something like, um, you first, then me. If you are happy, I am happy too. And then the heart is free. This is the secret. That's very nice. And if we have this attitude, first you, then me, but this is an attitude we have to develop by seeing the advantage of it. Yeah? And now with bodhicitta, not just one person, or three, or ten, everybody. Yeah? Everybody. And what I also want to maybe to add, you know the thing, I will invite all beings to be my guest. Like the things that we have now, as a bodhisattva, you would one thing is we're on training, okay? We, we're not Buddhas. We train to be, to, to be perfect in seeing everybody as equal. We're just training that. Nobody's asking you to be able to do it, even as a Bodhisattva. A Bodhisattva is somebody who trains to be a Buddha. And the Bodhisattva has all the rights to fail. That's okay. As long as he continues to train. So as a bodhisattva, of course you, you think I give away all my belongings to others, but in the meantime you use them in order to be able to practice, so you have them on loan. You treat them as if they are on loan. And if somebody steals them, you think, okay, I gave it away anyway, so now they came to get it. Yeah? Do you see what I mean? Because otherwise, if you have nothing, how are you going to practice? You cannot practice. So is that clear with that we give them the small finger or they want the whole hand? Like the more I, I am trying to satisfy my desires, the more the deeper the, the, the need and the lack will become. 
the more I invest, now I really use the word invest, in kind acts with others, the more uh, they will fulfill my needs of peace, happiness, freedom. But not wanting them to be kind to you, by the way. That's, that's another chapter. And we are kind of kind because we want to have a good reputation, or we want to be loved, or we want them to be kind to us. This also you have to drop. Others become the cause for your happiness when you have no expectations. Like a, like a therapist. If you are a therapist, then you are so happy when a patient says, okay, you helped me very much, thank you, goodbye. I will not see you again. And they go, they disappear. When your friend says that, you know, if your friend comes and says, wow, you helped me so much, you sat with somebody who was addicted to something, night after night after night, and say, now I think I'm okay, now I think I'm free, thank you very much. I don't need you anymore, goodbye. How would you feel? Good. Who said good? Okay. Yes, be there, not not over time, but be This is the best experience, best experience I had. Last time my sister needed it, they came when she said I don't need it anymore, I said perfect. Great. That would be the, that would be a sensible reaction. To think, wow, I helped her so much, she doesn't need me anymore. Not so much. Ever again. Yes, she does. Huh? Not now. What? I mean, that your sister says you help me enough. I don't want to see you again. This is what I'm saying. I don't need to see you again. Yeah, I will not see. I don't need you anymore. Not that just now. You I don't don't see no, no. I, I won't phone you. I, like a therapy. Yeah, you yeah. know, I'm not going to see my doctor when I'm when I don't need to talk to you. I'm not phoning him to say, oh, I'm well today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but when our friends do that and totally neglect us, like forget about us when we have invested in them. So the investment is for your happiness without wanting anything back. That is the investment. Your investment for the future to have a good rebirth, to be able to continue with your practice. So here, like Shanti Deva is telling us, that's the way to do it. Mm -hmm. And your friend, your people that you help, they will become the cause for your next good rebirth. They don't need to give you anything back right now. Yeah? Okay. 34. While in cyclic existence, how can I be joyful and unafraid if my heart readily prepare place? If I heart no, if in my heart I readily, readily prepare place for this incessant enemy of long duration, the sole cause for the increase of all that harms me. So I'm kind of, we are kind <coughs> to our harmer. Yeah. So this is the, this is the fifth kind of thought about pleasures. So we have the enslavers, we welcome them. Um, they last long time. We give the small finger, they won't go, no, what, what was before? They, they, stay stay they, stay they stay for long time. They stay for a long time, they will never be happy, no matter how much we give them. And now the fifth thought is we will never be in peace as long as we carry them with us, no matter where we go. Yeah? So that's the 34. While in cyclic insistence, how can I be joyful and unafraid if in my heart I readily prepare a place for this incessant enemy of long duration, the sole cause for the increase of all that harms me? Even if I'm quite peaceful and happy, but if the, if the I, the me, is still there, this is now talking about that, if the root cause is still there, I carry with me the potential that I can explode into anger or desire whenever the right object comes. Yeah. So the, the cause for our delusions is our habit, our previous action. But the condition for this to ripen is an object outside that we make contact with at that moment. That's why I get angry at some people and not at others. But the, the root cause, the substantial cause, is my previous habit of, of getting angry. Okay? And somehow, maybe this is where this latent fear and this latent kind of insecurity comes from because we know we carry an atomic bomb with us. Well, maybe not in that. Well, yeah. Or it's like you know, one of these devices that can explode any moment. Yeah. Like a, a hand grenade that the thing is already off. We're just holding it and we're not letting it go. We haven't thrown it yet, but the thing is off. Yeah, so this is how we should treat our pleasures. Something very, very, very dangerous. 
Okay, 35. And how shall I ever have happiness if in a net of attachment within my mind there dwell the guardians of the prisons of psychic existence? There is the disturbing